Nashville's Rock Station, 1029 The Buzz. I'm Dagwood, a legendary comic, and we're honored to have him in the studio. Dave Attell. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm I'm not a legend. I'm You're an not? old comic. You're an old comic? I'm an old road comic. <laughs> well, you just, uh, I mean, you <laughs> literally just got into Nashville, right? Yeah, like I flew like right into your parking lot, and now we're doing it. I thought this was baggage claim. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, I'm an old comic. So this yeah. is the comedy we can expect this weekend. Exactly. Yes. This old man, where am I? What's happening? It's cold. <laughs> now it's hot. Now I'm cold. And by the way, uh, it's been way too long since not only have we talked, but I've been to Nashville. So I'm glad to be back. Yeah. The first time you and I met, you had just done a Bonnaroo show. And oh, right. You were doing Zanies uh, for a couple of nights after that. Have you done Bonnaroo since then? Mm, I don't think so. Is that, is that, that just like. Talk about being old. Like I'm way too old for that. <laughs> That's like a lot of hot, a lot of sweaty, a lot of dirty. And, um, uh, you know, the music is cool and everything. But mm -hmm. um, I'm the kind of guy that's like, I like the music, um, you know, like basically in like when I'm like sitting down or having a good time, you know, like uh, like indoors. You know what I'm saying? Right. I like my... I like my music mixed with deodorant. There you go. <laughs> and without a heat stroke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is definitely, that's a hot, hot mess, as they say. But so even uh, though it was cool, once was good, once was enough for well, you. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I feel like the, you know, I'm like I said, I'm old. So I don't know if I connect to these kids, you know. I, well, I assume that uh, it's good to see them out. That's what I'm going to say. Usually mm -hmm. they're just illegally downloading. So. <laughs> that's, uh, let's see. Uh, you just flew. Did you come in from New York? Yes. You come in. That, that's, that's your home, right? I live in New York, and I um, like to think that I'm on the road more than I'm at home. So. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, we've had a lot of great New York comics in the last uh, few months. Jim Florentine was in here. We've had Jim Norton, uh, Steve Ranazizi, and they yeah. all they all told me that you were one of their favorite comics on the strip up there. Well, the how's that? The, uh, that's for your nice. peers. You know, well, respect. Jim, the, the two Jims I've toured with many a time. Mm -hmm. Jim Florentine, I just did a comedy underground show with him in. Uh, at a casino in uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, Jim Norton uh, is uh, is the best man. I mean, Jim, Amy Schumer, and uh, R.D. Lang. We mm -hmm. went on a great tour. We had some great uh, great shows, and uh, I love Jim. Jim has a special out every year. He's been doing that, and I'm like, that's intense, man, to be able to turn around material like that. You know, comedy, so mm -hmm. like to be able to do a whole new hour every year. That was like George Carlin does that. I know Louis C.K. does that, but it's very difficult. Yeah, I asked, uh, I asked Jim why he keeps so busy. He said it was because he hated himself. <laughs> he, he said anything he can do to get his mind off of himself. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Jim is always out there. And, uh, you know, the cool thing about Jim is that, uh, you know, he does not hold back. He really is fearless. Mm -hmm. I love him. I mean, I really do love the, uh, the material he brings to the stage. Now, you've been to Nashville before. You actually did an episode of Insomniac here. Yes. Do you remember what all you did on that show? I know you delivered milk I or... Yeah, I assume whatever I did now has been turned into like a Aubon Pond or uh, some other <laughs> franchise. Right. Because this was like a charming, I was so excited to come here for the Insomniac show. And, and so was the crew because they're like, oh, yeah, we'll get like the music thing going here. And then we'll get like, uh, you know, like I know it's a great drinking town. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you guys got all citified, you know. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, every place is kind of the same. And like uh, I was just in Atlanta. And I'll tell you that that's like basically, uh, you know, it's pretty much everybody lives there now is either from New York or from another country, like right? From a, like, like another like fantastic like Game of Thrones country. Like mm -hmm. some guy comes in from Westeros, and uh, you know he's <laughs> driving your cab, <laughs> and then uh, then uh, you know uh, Nashville though has the charm. So like uh, I remember we went to um, we did some uh, uh, barbecue late at night, the disco barbecue thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we did. Um, uh, of course, uh, we had to go to the, uh, the um, you know, Elvis thing. Okay. So we did that. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you allowed to even get near there now or probably not? I would think so. I don't think they would. Uh... Even with my American Sniper looks? You think? <laughs> no. Because did you see that movie? I did not see that movie. Okay. No. I look like almost every kill shot in the movie. <laughs> I really do. And now I know what I would look like if I would be popped in many different situations, like on a moped <laughs> or uh, buying a goat in a bazaar, something like that. That's one of my jokes. Sorry. And you can you can hear that when joke. you're on camera all the time. You know, you feel like gotta turn it up a notch. <laughs> I like to tell you, Dave, I've been uh, depressed ever since Dave's old porn went off. That was Did you really watch it? Yes, I did. Are here you here in the Bible me? belt? No, at showtime I watched it all oh, the God. time. I thought you had to like go up north. No, no, no. Of... No. We we have showtime here. No, I know you do. <laughs> I know you guys 
believe me, I'm not that kind of guy. Do you guys are blah, blah? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm telling you, like, that show is like the underground hit, man. That's the one I'm most proud of, Dave's Old Porn, because I got to br do a tribute for the old retro adult stars. Mm -hmm. And my comic friends came on, Artie Lang, Jim Norton, sure. all these great people, Chelsea Handler, Amy Schumer. And um, that's the one show that, like, wherever I go, there's always that one guy who's like, I got to tell you. And I'm like, oh, what's up? And he goes, I love that Dave's old porn. <laughs> and it's like the airport security guy or like, you know, like a cool dude. He's like waving traffic. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, man, me and my lady. We, I'm You and your lady. I was like, wow. <laughs> but, you know, I'd love to make more of those shows. I just don't have the rights to do it right now. So Is that the problem? But I would spend more of my own money to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't want my fans to sit, think I'm not going to go broke doing this. I definitely will. Were, were That's like those, kind of my known thing that I'm always going broke. Were were <laughs> those your own mo uh, your own movies that you watched? Or uh, they are now. They are now. <laughs> <laughs> I have a beautiful collection, three four hundred tapes. I think I I didn't do the count recently, but um, nothing creeps out a um, no cre creeps out a cleaning crew coming over your house and go like, oh, you don't have to go in that cabin. It's all retro porn. I'll just <laughs> I'll show it to you so you won't like have this imagination of how creepy it is. It's just old retro, <laughs> but uh, I, I would say uh uh. Uh, the movies that I, I really do like are these great old vintage. We were talking about it, Harry, mm -hmm. the little Harry, a little wild, lots of story. And, um, you know, sometimes the stories are pretty dramatic. There was like a lot of fights in them. And like to this day, like I'll look at, I'll look on those sites and I'll go like, you know, just type in like drama, car chase, fight, you know, something like that. Like, you know, like, like, uh, and retro will pop up. Just, <laughs> it'll just pop up. So. Who was your uh, Who was your favorite porn star you got to meet because of that show? Seika. Seika. That's, Easily. That was uh, Jim Norton was on that episode. Seika and Jim. That was one of my favorite episodes. And uh -huh. the fact that Jim had a picture of him meeting, of him meeting Seika like in the early early eighty no early nineties I guess or late eighties it was it was just it was just perfect. I could not believe that he had met her. I guess when she was dancing at some mm -hmm. point. But she is a true star. She is just so uh fun on and off the stage i mean like she is just so great and i i to this day like i'll call her like around the holidays something like that i love talking to her she's the best was she your favorite back then uh to this day i still yeah. uh, watch her uh her amazing body of work she's great my always favorite, does the trick my favorite back then was samantha strong she was oh, one of my favorites that's not a bad grab yeah i like that yeah she was one of my favorites so how about here's some like very small like uh, other ones like raven do you remember mm -hmm. her i remember that a lot of raven her. Um, who else? Uh, well, Serena, you had the, of course. You had the Lens, Amber, and Ginger. And that's already getting later. Right. You know, that's like the 80s. Because what I wanted to do is because we had Ginger Lynn on, we also had, um, you know, Christy Canyon, and they were like right. the, the 80s, like just like, you know, bang, amazing. But I wanted to get Amber Lynn, Ginger Lynn, and then who was the Asian guy who played basketball? Remember that guy? Yao, um, Yao Ming? No, he He's also had, he had a name like Lynn. I was trying to get all three oh, of them. Oh, Jeremy Lin. Yeah, I wanted to get all three of them okay. on the couch. The Lin show. <laughs> I don't think the NBA probably would have liked that, would they? Well, yeah, you know, you figure, you know, it would be like, you know, it's a dream team, my own dream team. <laughs> well, that was a great show. And, Thank um, you. You uh, asked you a quick question about Saturday Night Live. You were on that in the early 90s. You were a writer, right? Yeah, I was only a writer on it for like one season, and I didn't go to the 40th anniversary, but mm -hmm. it was, uh, I heard it was like a really like, um, almost like a, like it was beyond an event to have all those like people from the past and the, and today's cast together, you know? So I would say that for me, um, it wasn't that, <laughs> I mean, I was invited, but I, I, I you had were invited. To, they yeah. I had, well, I think all right. Everybody who ever was a part of the show, mm -hmm. they really wanted everybody there, but I really was uh, working, you know, doing stand up. So, but I, I could see how like that, that really is an amazing thing. It's like almost like a, you know, spectacle, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, what was your favorite sketch that ever got on the air that, that I wrote? Mm -hmm. Uh, probably nothing. Um, I would say that the majority of the sketches I wrote didn't go anywhere. And a lot of them, uh, not only died on, um, uh, like they died in the room. Like they didn't even make it to the, like, uh, the pre run through or something mm -hmm. like that. So that's when, you know, it's really bad. Like when you, uh, from what I remember, I assume it's different now, but, um, you know, you have it typed up. Like you're typing, like actual typewriter, not right. a computer, right. like typing. And then like, uh, you know, everybody reads it and then they just sh sh rip it up, <laughs> put it in the can. I'm like, wait, I just spent eight <laughs> hours thinking of a funny voice for, you know, a toad to have. I, I would I would assume that there's a lot of politics backstage at SNL because we've had a lot of comics in here from SNL like Rob Schneider and 
Uh, Chris catan has been through here. Oh, really? Jo- John Lovitz, and they all kind of seemed real paranoid about their sketches. They would always talk. Yeah, about. those guys really rocked out that show, though. I mean, like mm-hmm. they were like the superstars. Like I was there when Rob was there, and I, I know John from the road a little bit, but uh, I would say that those guys like kind of really got that show. That really showed the best. The you know because they were sketch guys, they were good writers, and they also like really had these characters that that really caught on. But um, you know, I I don't. I, I never, I, I, for me personally, I would say that those kind of shows are great, uh, for breaking young talent. But I, I, I also think that like, um, writing is key and that, um, we do kind of live in a world now where like jokes are not as important as like, I guess, you know, voices and characters and, and like, uh, there seems to be a lot more storytelling in the comedy clubs. Mm-hmm. So I would say that it would be cool if they injected more of uh like hard jokes. Like that's why I like that the guys on the show now who I kind of know Pete Davidson and Michael Shea, they're joke guys. They're, they're comics like uh stand up comics. So I think that's good. I think it's good when they, when they bring those guys in too, you know, to balance it out. I saw the uh, list of people who were writers when you were and uh, Bob Odenkirk, that guy's hit gold. No, I, I don't think he was, was there he when I was there, there, but he is a great writer. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a, like a, he's a guy of many hats, you know, he's like a writer. He did the sketch show with David Cross, which is mm-hmm. still probably the gold standard of like that kind of, that kind of like really, really, really just cool. Like, you know, like sketches that like blur and, and bend and all that kind of stuff. And uh, his new show, do you watch it? Uh, you Better Call Saul? Yeah. yeah I've, I've just caught up on it. I only watched the first two or three and then I had a, you know, I was on mm-hmm. the road and all that kind of stuff. But that's so cool that like they have some of the old characters in there as well. Right. So. Bring it, they kind of mix everything together. Let's hope Bill Burr makes an appearance. I huh? love Bill. He's been in here before too. Bill is, is the best. We do that Patrice <laughs> O'Neill benefit. Uh huh. He puts that together with Maureen and um, she she's a producer and uh, that it's amazing. It's really done with love and we all are just lucky to be a part of it. And um, Bill is just he he's an amazing stand up and he really is like an outstanding guy to yeah. do this. So yeah, he's really he's really he's cool. He's been in here. He's quite one a few of our months. best nights. Of the round table of laughter. Yes, he is. Yes. <laughs> Dave, we appreciate you coming in, buddy. Dave, I love, man. Listen, let's not meet at Bonnery next time. No. Let's and meet outside at the, uh, at the whatever. We'll just watch the kids have a good time we'll from get, like an air conditioned RV. Right. We'll get coffee and smoke. I love it. All right. Thank Dave, you. Thank you.